And we are live. Good morning, or afternoon, whenever it is. Hope you all enjoyed the flat offer. We put a lot of work into it. John is fully asleep right now. <laughs> you want to do the uh, the op you want to ask for opening statements, Nathan? Oh, sure. I can riff on that. We're all gathered here today in this court because of reasons. And if you could elaborate on this, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two hours on the clock. Uh, the prosecutor goes first. I think. <laughs> Opening yeah. statement. Uh, Governor Rhodes stands up uh, and turns to the uh, turns to the gathered jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are here today for two very important reasons. Firstly, to seek justice for the victims of the defendant those who were taken from us in acts of barbarism, and those whose lives were forever altered by the acts of John Reed. And secondly, perhaps most importantly, to make certain that this man will not be able to harm further victims. The evidence presented today will reveal a clear and compelling narrative which not only proves John Reed's crimes, but the fact that he cannot be allowed to further interact with the public for all our safety. This trial is not just about the letter of the law, but the principles of decent, integrity, and respect for our fellow human beings, which many are so willing to cast aside. Thank you for your attention as we begin this pursuit of justice. And uh, Governor Rhodes sits down. Okay. Would you like to begin your okay. closing st uh, opening statement? Defense? Um, uh, Joseph... Uh, uh, Joseph Donnelly. Uh, that's you. Uh, yes, that's 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 uh, that's me. And he shifts uncomfortably in his chair. Um, he stands up and he takes a deep breath and he goes over to um, to the podium and uh, he says. Mm. May it, may it, uh, may it, oh, any, shit, I'm so sorry, day, yeah. no you can, we do sorry, have somehow opened up YouTube, here. <laughs> may it, may it please the court, five weeks ago, John Reed, then known as Steel Survivor, killed Duke Barrett of Goldthrone. This fact is not in contention, and the defense will not attempt to contend it. But it is not the whole story, as much as the prosecution would like it to be. John Reed's story largely mirrors the story of Briarstone, for better and for worse. His adolescence went, for the most part, about as well as could be expected for anyone growing up as an orphan here. He had a stable job as a snake hunter, a girlfriend, a best friend, and a guardian who thought the world of him. However, this idol would not come to last. Mr. Reed found himself swept up in the Briarstone secession crisis, fighting for General Mustard to restore some semblance of stability to the home that he loved. After the fighting had subsided and his friends and comrades had been buried, he did not get any time to rest. The war against the barbarians broke out soon afterwards, and once again Mr. Reed found himself fighting for his life and his homeland. When the smoke cleared, he had scarcely turned 15 years old. 15 years old. Think about all the things in your life that have happened to make you the adult you are today. How many moments can you point to that have changed the way you thought about people you interact with every day? How many times have you gotten embarrassed or rejected or felt the abject joy that comes with being truly understood? Mr. Reed got none of that because for years he lived every day not knowing if he would see the sun set. John Reed never got to become a man. 
because he was too busy being a soldier. The war against the barbarians nearly claimed his life. He was gravely wounded in a friendly fire incident involving Vermilion Prime during the Battle of the Oasis. When the battle had been won, he was left for dead after either nobody had noticed him or nobody wanted to help him. He didn't forgive Vermilion Prime for this until very recently, and he certainly hasn't healed entirely since then. He walked away from that battlefield wondering why his ally had shot at him, why no one tried to help him, and why the nightmares would come back every time he went to sleep. Mr. Reed didn't go back to Briarstone for a long time. He spent his time doing the only thing he had ever really been taught to do, fight. The notorious Snakebite gang was his main target. He would dispatch mainly lower-level grunts as they committed violent crimes and robberies. It wasn't much, but he did find slight fulfillment in fighting for people who couldn't fight for themselves. This was the only life he ever knew. Now, look. John Reed's past does not excuse what he did that day in Goldgrum. I'm not trying to weave you a sob story. I'm not trying to pull on your heartstrings so hard that you'll ignore the fact that he saw Duke Barrett being needlessly cruel to his workers and found that a justification to kill him. Rather, I'm telling you all this because it shows how remarkable Mr. Reed's next actions were. One of the defendant's associates confronted him about the murder in a clearing a short walk north of Alchemist Town. The message was clear. Cut the crap and become a man. Mr. Reed resolved to do just that, burying Steel Survivor's pistols near a tree trunk and carving a message into its bark. Here lies Steel Survivor, killed by John Reed. Evidence and witness testimony will definitively show that since then, John Reed has cooperated with investigators against the advice of counsel and put his life on the line for others numerous times. He never stopped fighting for anyone who gave him a second chance. The defense will further demonstrate that there is a wide gulf between how the law has treated the defendant and how the prosecution wants the law to treat the defendant. It is the opinion of the defense that John Reed's punishment must force him to do two things. One, bear the consequences of his actions for the rest of his life. And two, work in service of the myriad of people that he has hurt. If he is sentenced to death, he will only need to bear the consequences of his actions for as long as it takes him to fall to the end of the noose. If he is imprisoned for life, he will rot away as a useless thing and nothing will get better. Instead, both goals can be accomplished if he is placed in servitude, in perpetuity, to the people of Briarstone. I've spent years guiding people throughout Briarstone's wilderness, and John Reed is, without a doubt, one of the most difficult people I have ever worked with. He can demand a lot, he can be quick to anger, he often doesn't respect boundaries. He is beyond obsessed with rekindling the relationship he had with his girlfriend to the point where he will sometimes be unable to think of anything else. Still, I don't think I've fought so hard for anyone else in my life because I've seen the boundless good he can do when you put him in an environment where he can thrive. John Reed has had little guidance in life thus far and now represents a unique opportunity for the law to lead a soul away from destruction and towards righteousness. Do not waste this opportunity to do good in this evil world. Right the wrongs of this harsh land while you still have the means and time. And if you must condemn the defendant, then know when you do, you condemn those he could save. As he has saved myself, along with the entire defense counsel, you the jury, and every living soul in and out of Briarstone. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Governor, call your first witness. Hello. I get to call the first witness. But it's cool. Good work. All around. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, John, I think, tears up with this. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, if I may speak and call my first sure. witness. The prosecution calls John Reed to the stand. 
Yeah, he testify is. on his actions. Very well. Also, the one we're at court for. Just making sure we have that down. Uh, before John goes up, uh, well. uh, Joseph gives him a little uh, a pat on the shoulder, and he whispers, "Remember, two to three sentences." All right. <laughs> Mr. Reed. <laughs> yes. True. Your defense has done a very well, good job in uh, establishing your character as a man who very who throws himself behind any cause, who will fight zealously for what he believes is right. Do you find this to be true? Yes. Uh, do you find it to still be yes. true since your quote unquote revelation and coming of a new man? Explain further. Do you still follow your causes to the letter zealously, regardless of what others think of your actions? It seemed, from what your defense was saying, regarding certain uh, past obsessions you might have followed and might still be in pursuit of, do you believe this to still be true? I do believe I'm moral, but I do I not see. follow them zealously. I see. So, Mr. Reed, we're here for a very simple reason. And I must ask you, do you genuinely believe that the tragedy, the travesty that occurred in Goldthrone would not occur again under your newfound belief? Indeed. And now, this is still the case, despite uh, and uh, Governor Rhodes pulls out a uh, like a long sheaf of paper. Despite this litany of crimes you have committed since your supposed revelation. Objection, Your Honor. Assumes facts, Objection, not in evidence. The list is allegations. They are charges. They have not been proven yet. Your Honor, Your Honor, a number of these have been proven, most of which are substantiated in Marshal Carlson's report. And I would suggest that the prosecution stick to those if it wishes to if it wishes to be included in the witness's testimony. Agreed. Stick to those we can prove. Very well. I want the you... fucking ACLU on our asses. Do you, Mr. Reed, would you please comment on your actions in the town of Middleton? Particularly relating to... Objection! Narrative. Excuse me? Uh, sorry? What was Objection. that? Objection. Objection. <laughs> Objection, narrative. Um, the prosecution is calling for an answer that requires telling an entire story. I'm acting... Uh, I will simplify my request. Thank you, Defense Counselor Patrick Liss. <laughs> Mr. Donnelly, if you would please sit down. <laughs> I see your little happy dance. I will not have it. <laughs> keep your ass in jail or I get to keep it. Very well. Oh, this is Mr. Reed. In... <laughs> if you could please comment on what you did upon entering the caves beneath Middleton. I went into the cave, I crawled through, we scouted the area before uh, going in to save one of our comrades' father who was currently held hostage and was making weapons for the Snakebite gang. Our plan was to get him out of there, out of um, Milton to not stop help the stink biking as well as to potentially try to I, I don't um, need your destroy the weapons you need. I don't need your reasoning for your actions. But if you could please comment on uh, a certain associate which which assisted you in this task. Uh, one, uh, I believe his name was Garda. Objection, uh, member. Your Honor. Uh, the, the, the individual in question is a former 
uh, member of the snakebite gang. His identity has not been made public. Should this information remain on the record, it puts this individual's life in I will grave allow, danger. I will allow for the name to be altered on the official records in order to prevent any recognition. Let's of call him Deathblade. Uh, sure, Your Honor. Uh, uh, oh, I, all right. I mean, well, the defense would accept Deathblade. <laughs> the prosecution will also accept Deathblade. Upon entering this tunnel, uh, according to the marshal's notes, yeah, it was requested that he turns to the judge, Deathblade. Mm -hmm. The judge set up, smiles under his Set up a number of explosive oh, charges at the entrance of this tunnel. Were you aware of this when it occurred? No, I was not aware. I don't believe. Wait. Sorry. Give me one moment. Uh, me, the player. I'm trying to remember. Did I remember this? I think I do remember this, yes. Yes, I recall that. Did you do any preventative measures when you. when he was enacting this plan? Did you attempt to stop it? I was not. I was not there to supervise. My main priority at the time was to try and save uh, Mr. Mr. Knight. I think that's his last name. So you willingly allowed a member of your group to set an explosive charge in the center of a crowded town in a public area. Uh, with no supervision, no attempt to stop him, nothing along those lines. Is that correct? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Facts not in evidence. There is no evidence to suggest that the area was crowded or occupied at the time of the explosion. Uh, Your Honor, the area in question was in fact in the center of town, outside one of the most populated areas in said town. Uh, I have is a that map. true? I have a map There's of a map? the town right here. Uh... I'll just unless pull, the, I'll just pull unless, up that map real quick. Unless the prosecution can produce positive evidence that there were individuals in the area at the time of the explosion, the defense will not accept this line of questioning. I can is there a map or do I, I can, not pretend? There is a map, Your Honor. If you okay. Kindly look at row twenty. <laughs> I can, in okay. fact, prove that there were people affected by this blast. Roll 20 is, of course, what we call our bailiff. Thank you, bailiff, roll 20. <laughs> if you would kindly read the notes, it does explicitly state that the mechanisms were designed to detonate upon a tripwire, which requires the passage of a person over, underneath, over top of the explosives. That proves that there was at least one person within the blast radius. Where do I see this map? It does not prove it was a crowded area like you claimed, unless that is speculation. The defense uh, will accept whoa. that there. Oh, the brothel. defense will accept. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the defense will the defense will accept that there was an individual in the area. The defense will not accept that the area was crowded. Your Honor, I believe that it would be basic common sense to accept this, but I will submit to the uh, defense's arguments here. Thankfully, after, the world doesn't run on common sense. After being able As to you distract have myself, quite shown. After being able to distract myself from the brothel long enough to focus on the explosives, Your Honor, seems it like is, a bad. It seems like it some is reckless a behavior. Matter. It does. Well, I know, but. I would also agree, Your Honor, that this does seem like reckless behavior, and not the behavior of a man who has a new value for human life. Mm-hmm. Explosives notoriously bad for life. I say it stays. All right. May I speak, Your Honor? Sure. If you're trying to suggest that I am... I was the one that made this plan. You are incorrect. I did not make this plan. Um, this was through deliberation, with, including the marshal. And 
and I believe the marshal, if he were, he would have opposed to this. And I believe that Deathblade was supervised uh, when arming the explosives. Uh, and who could you please? I was not one if, of them. Could you perhaps point out who was supervising him during the time of these explosives? I believe it was Joseph. Mr. Donnelly, no defense. Very well. That is understandable. You are quite a, you know, tight as a pair of thieves, you are. Speaking of theft. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Reed, if you would kindly... Another incident involving this Deathblade character. Uh, would you kindly... I'm going to ask you some questions regarding the train in which you, Mr. Deathblade, and to my knowledge, your entire defense council entered. I'd like to start. Were you knowingly aware of the decree that had been made by King Dijon himself that that train were to be buried and never interact with due to the potential health hazard it might spread? I was aware. And yet you chose to do it anyways. Indeed. There was a valuable in the train that could... That was very... Important and or value. It was a supposed location of Rockefeller's um, money stash. That could potentially help whoever finds it. Um, think so you're again, saying English that or... you knowingly broke a royal decree to enter a plague-infested train with the efforts, with the motivation, apologies, of personal profit. Objection, leading question. No, sir. Well, he answered it. <laughs> then what, clarify if you would so kindly... Why did you choose to enter that train? Because if we did not, one of the Snakebike game members would eventually get into that train and find themselves with that, with Rockefeller's um, supposed stash. Um, we did not wish for the Snakebike game to gain any wealth, and I believe. Uh, the marshal said that that money would go directly to Briarstone if we were to find it. And I have in that. my notes here that the marshal explicitly only mentioned that to one of your party, uh, a Mr. Ilanapi, who I believe is sitting in the defense council over there, while the rest of you were unaware of this claim until after you had left the train. If you could pl kindly, if the, if the witness could kindly revise their statement. To include this information. My apologies. My apologies. Um, but to be honest, I, even without knowledge of that, I, I don't think I would have um, took the profit. To be honest, um, there might have been a finder's fee, as per usual, um, but not high. So. You were you chose to enter this train, knowingly breaking a law in the process, knowingly potentially releasing a deadly pathogen, and your motivation for it was you maybe might have thought you could get a little bit of money later on as a finder's fee, perhaps. No, sir. If you were claiming that it was to keep it out of the hands of the Snakebite Gang, as you have also stated, uh, Mr. Deathblade is a former member of that gang and is no longer associated with them. Why exactly, what was your pressing need to get in there if the only other person who was aware of his location was not a member of that gang? Well, before Death Note had well, the information, it Death belonged... Death our the said piece of information was used to belong to a Saint Pike captain that we um, that we killed 
during uh, a, a run-in. Uh, they came after us, we defended, and uh, he was killed. Uh, we did an assumption that um, if when the captains knew of this treasure, we assumed that all of the captains of Snake by Game would know of this treasure. So it was best to assume. It's best to assume the worst and and make sure it doesn't get out of their hands. And if I was not trying to gain a profit, I just want to get out of Snake by Hands and into Briarstone's hands because because of the current situation we are in right now. And Would you you, ask a clarifying lore question? I don't know. Sure. I guess. I, the, the <laughs> would find that acceptable, yes. But the prosecutor What's the deal with the out? snake bite, boy? Talking uh, mafia? For, for what's, context, the, what's the level of threat? Here? To establish context to the Joey, the snake bite gang is a uh, known insurgency group around Briarstone, made largely of the of uh, former military men uh, who split off after a schism occurred in Brastone some eight years ago. And the uh, defense will also be further examining their level of threat during cross-examination. Oh, thank you. The organized way. crime syndicate comprised almost entirely of former child soldiers, to give you some context. Most it's, of which... It's like Halo. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> back to the questioning at hand, <laughs> Mr. Reed, your entrance to the train aside, upon entering the train, did you and the party, do you, do and your uh, compatriots take proper care in the uh, treatment of this train and the diseases within? Indeed, we did, I, we did not touch any of the bodies that were lying around. We treasury went through to the supposed area. Uh, we found the area. We we saw the disease manifest itself, and we uh, excuse, excuse the mask. My apologies. Thank you. Um, we saw the mask manifest itself, which we believe to be the lead cause of this disease. And it seemed that if it touched you, you would get the disease. So, we ran. Uh, and you say you did not interact with any of the corpses on your entrance to Indeed. the street. Uh, that is quite interesting. As Need according to, my to the marshal and also to a local bookkeeper in that area... Uh, several artifacts were, in oh. fact, scavenged from the train and given oh. to this man as... Not, I, I obviously will not say bribe to, to allow him to use his station to give you information about the train you would not otherwise know. But could you clarify on the items retrieved from the train? I was not the one uh, that picked up these items, so I have no knowledge of this. Uh, we did took uh, some precaution going in. Uh, I made some makeshift masks for everyone that were entering this train. Um, and I believe all of us were wearing gloves at the time, or at least I was. I. It's been a while since the uh, train, so my apologies for not being more... Uh, specific. I'll, I will accept that. But you are aware scavenging from a corpse, even one in a plague area, is still considered a act of grave defilement. Grave robbery is a very serious crime, and I would not consider it to... I would not consider a man who commits grave robbery, or a man who associates with someone who commits grave robbery, to be a morally correct man. Objection, speculation. I am simply speaking out of personal opinion. Still speculation, oh. nonetheless. This, this, court is there, not, boy. Th this court is not interested in the prosecution's personal opinion. This court is interested in I'm not in reading your opinion in the local well, periodicals. I will, I will cut to the chase in the line of this questioning. 
There is one other item which was retrieved from this train. Mm -hmm. uh, which, according to the Marshal, was retrieved by your companion over there. And, uh, the governor points to Ilanapi again. Uh, which was, in fact, a skull of some creature. Could you please account the story of that creature and what exactly happened to it in that train? I believe the Wendigo came through the train roof. It came down and attacked us, so we... I believe we killed it before... It was, going to, it was going to attempt to take the uh, mask, uh, but I believe we killed it before it was able to take the mask. Uh, I what happened. Uh, according why, according to story. the marshal's statements on what occurred in, from your own recollection, because you did tell him what occurred in the train, the marshal, as clarification to the jury, was not present in the train at this time. This is all somewhat second hand he only has confirmation on what was removed from the train which included the skull of a quote unquote wendigo uh, and according to accounts the creature dissolved into a puddle of blood and viscera that upon making dad. contact with the mask hence why its skull was so easily able to be removed does that ring any bells, Mr. Reed? No. I remember no. we killed it before it touched the mask. So... That's just the way it died. I do... I've never encountered a Wendigo in my life. So I do not know how they decompose. Your Honor... I would like to uh, put into record the accounts of when the train first arrived in Briarstone. Uh, the symptoms cool. shown by those people, those poor victims of the train, were also shown in rapid succession by this uh, Wendigo. Uh, this Wendigo, which then was a portion of it, a biological contaminant, you may call it, call it was removed from the train. Objection lacks personal Objection. knowledge. I would ask that the skull be added into uh, court's evidence. Uh, we were not able to procure it as due to the defense team being out of town until very recently. So we don't have the skull? I believe Mr. Yes. Ilanapi has the skull or you... had it previously. Your Honor, the skull is not in evidence. It is not the defense's problem that the, that the prosecution called this trial on such short notice and did not give themselves enough time to Easy. procure I did, I Get over it. Your Honor, the, the, the defense is knowingly withholding out. evidence. I would like that skull. They have been aware like of this that. evidence for multiple, for, since they arrived in Briarstone and have not procured it. Speaking of, there was further evidence which they failed to procure despite claiming that they would, uh, the murder weapons of one John <laughs> Reed, which, according to the defense, on multiple occasions, were buried in a certain location somewhat north of uh, Alchemist Town. Now, yes, we have in the included evidence uh, the substandard investigation for said murder weapons after being given a description, and under short notice... Um, our attempts to retrieve the weapons afterwards, again, upon the short notice of the calling of this trial, your, has your led Honor, to the disappearance to, of them. He cannot refer to the investigation efforts as substandard. Only multiple... four officers were sent out to retrieve a murder weapon of concrete importance to a, an impending trial. As the location was explicitly world. stated, and it was repeatedly checked in the exact location, with the, judge, the current judge's presence during one such occasion, no murder weapon was found. Which, to me, that only can apply that this murder weapon was, in fact, concealed by the defense for some reason or another. I'm with the prosecutor on this one. Thank At you, door. Judge. Don't worry, I've got this. I do want that skull, even if not for evidence, just for myself. <laughs> but, Mr. Elanabe, do you have the skull on you at this moment? I do not. We, I had left it in Beach 2 as we had passed through. Can we send, like, a letter? 
Uh, that town is not in uh, time. About a week away. Just. A really fast runner. <laughs> I would like to move to my final line of questioning, if you'd be so kind, John. We have trains. We just established that. Not to that. Not to that town, Your Honor. Okay. I only got the brothel man. <laughs> I'd like to remind the jury that the judge was found on short notice. <laughs> like a lot of things, apparently. At least they can find me on short notice. Am I right? Can't find oh. a fucking skull. You're right, Your Honor. <laughs> okay, what's next? <laughs> uh, Mr. Reed, I'd like to just ask you a couple of questions about the murder, the primary murder for which you are being uh, accused of today, uh, the murder of one Duke Barrett. Are you at liberty to discuss this? Okay. Now, yes, sir. what exactly was your process in determining the Duke's guilt. As I recall, no. there was some mention of investigations done by yourself. Back when I was due a survivor, um, I would I would get the bullet for and and it would be carved a name. Someone would carve a bullet of their name of who they wanted murdered. Because either they are corrupt and no one has dealt with them, or they're just evil and no one has dealt with them. Regardless, um, I got the bullet that said Duke Barrington back when I was back back during Steel Survivor. And before I would kill someone, I would always do some research. Or by research, I mean I would stalk them for a day, for a day or two, and. My apologies. Anyways. Sorry, and there's a lot of fairies making what? ding noises around here, I know. <laughs> we gotta get that fixed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. Anyways, I reduced I Thank you, Your Honor. Um, anyways, um, so, because I would do this a couple days of research to make sure I'm not it's not like a phony thing, like a, like a jealous girlfriend or something like that. Um, so I stalked um, Duke Barrington for a couple of days, uh, to see if he was indeed a bad person. And when I was steal, um, at the conclusion of the investigation, I believed he was a a bad person. So, yeah. Uh, I, Your Honor, I would like the defense, I, I, the defendant, to refer to himself by his legal name instead of referring himself by his alter ego, just to avoid confusion for the jury. If you could please refer to yourself as John Reed when related to your past actions. Seems fair. It's a cool name, but it seems fair. So deathly, but it's pretty cool. But continue, defendant. Uh, oh, uh, that was yours. So, to summarize, you stalked the head of state for several days and decided entirely on your own that he should be executed. And at no point in this did you determine to if you did have sufficient findings to warrant a man's death, I would have thought you would bring them to uh, a court such as this one here that could officiate such an event. Uh, what made you choose not to do that? Truly, when these would go out, Truly, when these are. There's a couple reasons that people will write the name on the boy. Either they have tried to, and they'll just either pay the fine and get away with it, rig a jury, or uh, bribe an official. 
and at the time, at that time, uh, I did not trust in the Barthorn government. Uh, and Governor Rose kind of like looks around the room when he says that. That is quite a heel turn you have made since then. Uh, a, a, for, a one final question related to your statement. You say you followed the. Um, you say you followed the Duke for several days. This is correct. No, sir. A couple. Right for a couple uh, of days. Now, according to my to the investigation reports of one Jade Barrett, your party left the town of uh, the Dead Village around on uh, February 8th and arrived in Goldthrone on February 12th. This is confirmed by a number of witnesses. Uh, at the time, you were dressed very recognizably, apparently. A lot of full black leather, eyeliner, does this ring a bell? Indeed. Yeah, uh, I would hope so. Uh, I have a receipt here for a purchase made on February 12th by a Mr. John Reed, signed under the name John Reed, of a engagement ring. Is this? Did you in fact make this purchase? I didn't make that purchase, but I made that in Alchemist Town. Uh, that is incorrect. According to a jeweler in Goldthrone, a town known for its uh, numerous amenities and fine crafted uh, jewelry, the jeweler has you purchasing an item, two of them in fact, $20 each for a total of $40. Is this correct? Indeed, this I made that purchase. I, I made yeah. the engagement purchase, but that was up in Alchemist Town. That is incorrect. Blatantly false. Your Honor, the defendant is lying on the stand right now, uh, knowingly going against proven evidence. Uh, jury, could you really trust this man to not be lying about his other actions Objection today? Objection opinion. Apologies, defense. Mr. Reed, do you still stand I'll by the claim that you jury, purchased this? Jury, just forget that. Forget he said anything. <laughs> Forget it. Um, the ju uh, John looks at, at the um, judge and goes, um, Your Honor, um, uh, if you like, uh, if you can cast the truth on me for a couple seconds, and I'll tell you where I purchased them, because that is where I purchased them. Can I do and that? This will prove... Yeah, you can. I'll, I will allow this. Sure, defense, I don't know the truth. You, I raised my this? massive hammer. And I'm allow this. A confirmation. Uh, to, All right. Yeah, the, the defense will allow this. Uh, okay, I play on my big hammer into the ground. Because, oh, I did do that. My apologies. My apologies for All right, then. that. Um, I did buy my, I did purchase those rings at Gold Throne, but I do not believe. I. Do not understand what where this is leading to. I will provide the relevance. Uh, Your Honor, on the same day that these rings were purchased, Duke Barrett was shot in the head in his office. Shot twice, first in the neck, then in the head, as the investigation photos will show is quite a gruesome scene. Uh, I would like to point out, as the defense counsel has stated, the first thing they did upon arrival was purchase these rings. Later that same day, not five hours later, the Duke was assassinated. Now, five-hour investigation, that would not get most police officers in this fine state very much time to do anything. Now, Mr. Reed, would you like to revise your statement of how you spent several days uh, investigating the Duke, when in fact it was, according to our timeline, we have okay, now so firmly established five hours or is this another knowing lie made to mislead the jury I'm still on, I still I'm still under the effect of zone of truth yeah you're still under the effect of zone of truth 
maybe? Could you please um, answer the question, defendant? I... Yes, um... I have to revise my statement of the couple of days. My apologies. Um, it's been a long time since then, so... And a lot of events had occurred after that, so I... It's kind of hard to keep events in track. Um, I... After I purchased those rings, I decided to check for some work. Because at, at the time I was low on cash, so... I found the bull in the quarter. Um, I'll repeat I that again. A, a, bol a bolus and a what? What was your payment for this uh, crime you committed? A quarter. A quarter. A quarter worth the life of a man who devoted his life in service of this nation. Duke Barrett was shot twice. First in the throat, leading him to be unable to cry out for help to any of the uh, surround any one any of his uh, surrounding employees or servants, and secondly in the head, right in the eye. This was a gruesome sight. Sight, an icon, nice. No. Uh, uh, what? Bad. What is the uh, the defense has an objection? Yeah. Assumes uh, you. Evidence. Yeah, assumes facts, not evidence, into the character of Duke Barrett. And it also uh, assumes as no evidence has been provided to his um, character. It also assumes that the bullet that he was shot in the throat to make sure that he couldn't cry out. The prosecution has not produced any evidence suggesting that this is the case. Um, that is true. All I can prove is that John Reed valued that quarter more than this man's life. Your witness defense. No. Are you uh, insinuating that our uh, client killed him solely for the quarter? He did explicitly state that he was low on funds, which is why he went looking for work. So you assume that he did it for the quarter and nothing else? We got this, don't worry. Your witness and, uh, and the uh, yes. Rhodes steps back behind the prosecutor's stand. And uh, uh, Joseph stands up, adjusts himself, and shuffles some paper. Witness, let's get a few things straight. Uh, when you went to Middleton, were you aware of snakebite gang activity in the town? Before I got to Middleton? No, sir. Yes. So, you're saying you oh, weren't... Yeah. Th I was not aware of the thing my game members um, court, sort oh, of I'm, taking I'm not control talking, of Middleton. You weren't aware that Snakebite gang members were taking control of Middleton. Objection, Correct. Your Honor. Saying that they took control of Middleton is not an accurate statement. There's no proof to this. No evidence uh, has been submitted by the defense to prove this. This is hearsay your, at best. Your Honor, further, yes. further witness testimony will display that this is the case. Definitively. I'll allow it for now. So, when you got to Middleton, what extent of snakebite gang control did you observe? I observed that um, they were usually in a saloon uh, um, there, but also we found some of the local residents um, imprisoned for um, for some odd, um, I wouldn't even say crimes, like one would talk back to a state by gang and they would be imprisoned. So you're saying that you found a prison with civilians controlled by the snakebite gang who they had been imprisoned by? Correct. Okay. The honor evidence? Uh, what I'm merely asking the defense, I'm merely asking the witness what he saw. This is just testimony, Mr. Prosecutor. Very well. 
No, I get to say it. Very well. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Mr. Reed, what could you repeat for the court what the purpose of your visit to Middleton was? Uh, our visit there was to save one of our, one of our party's um, father, who is who is currently held there against his will, and manufacturing weapons um, for Saint Bike Gang, um, to or else they would kill him. And did you observe any evidence of this uh, of, of this weapons manufacturing process? Did you? Uh, 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 perhaps uh, products or, or or parts that was used that were used yeah. in them. Where did you see those? They were in the tunnel. They were in the tunnel where he had his workshop. Did you and see them anywhere else? Also, they were. Yes, I saw the I think four to five uh, crate loads of guns in the storage area. The storage area uh, was this uh, a, a, a warehouse of some sort, or did it take a different yes. form? So you're saying it was a warehouse. Okay, so you're saying just to be clear that there were large quantities of weapons being stored at this facility that you infiltrated in Middleton. Yes. Okay. Let's skip forward a little bit. You had infiltrated the tunnel, and you had rescued. Uh, uh, you you had rescued Mr. Knight. How how did you know that there were not going to be large numbers of of snake bite gang uh, members patrolling the hallways? Like I said, when we scouted the area before, it was during the daytime. Uh, we were able to go in and out of there pretty easily. So we, I mean, we still took precautions and went around safely. Um, one of our, I believe we had one of, another one of our party members um, distracted us by a gang um, to, to reduce our chance of being spotted. How did they do that? He went into the tavern and played a song. So, so what you're saying or is the that this, My apologies, the brothel. So what you're saying nice. is that this individual had a performance specifically designed to draw people away from the area that you were operating in. Yes. Okay. Once you were about to escape. What actions uh, did did you take? Any actions to prevent the weapons that Mr. Knight had been manufacturing for the from the Snakebite Gang? For did you prevent? Did you take any actions to prevent those weapons from being used by the Snakebite Gang for illicit or nefarious purposes? Yes, we told Death Deathly. Death was it Deathclaw? Blade. Deathblade. We, we told Bluff Deathblade because he was a expert in explosives to destroy those weapons um, before we get out of Milton because we did not want those in the hands of Snake by Gang members. Uh, Objection, Your Honor. Misstating of evidence. The weapons destroyed there were, in fact, government property which had been previously stolen by Snake by Gang. Not anything produced by any captives. Interesting. Your Honor. In defense? Yes. The purpose of the actions was still the same. We couldn't exactly haul out all those weapons at once and give them back to the people who originally owned them, what we could do was make sure that the people who wanted to kill and rob people could not use them. Objection, Your Honor. Specul speculation. 
they are no knowledge. I clarify the order of events here that there is a supply of government situation. owned weapons that were then stolen by the snake bite gang. Or were about to be stolen. Oh, they were uh, stolen. They were no uh, longer in government them. property. They were still government property. Stolen does not make them no longer government property. The use or destruction I'm not of them in is still of... a crime. Uh, they also don't belong property. to Briarstone or the Federation. So it's no government within this jurisdiction either. I'll, I'll allow both these stories to stand. Jerry, keep in mind that uh, justice is tricky. Narratives are hard. <laughs> I would like to clarify for the jury, the weapons destroyed there were in fact government property, not anything produced by one Benjamin Knight. Which government? We are in a we are in a, a peace treaty currently with both the Union and Confederate armies. Destruction of any either of their property could lead to a major diplomatic incident and the loss of many lives. And the defense please continue with their questioning. Of course, I or, simply or it, wanted. It, I simply wanted to establish for the jury the, the correct order of events here. My, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, you are the one who yielded your time with the witness. But continuing, did Mr. Knight tell you what the purposes of these large caches of stolen weapons were? Yes, and we have also, I have also eyewitnessed, um, Before you continue to... witness, what was the, what were the purpose? What did Mr. Knight tell you the purpose of those stolen weapons were? To be enchanted by him and to arm the Saint by gang members. So you're saying that even if these weapons were not produced by Mr. Knight, or the snakebite gang. They were vital components in producing powerful weaponry that the gang would be utilizing. Mm -hmm. I Your, overheard Your the Honor, statement. How is by... this relevant to the status of John Reed? This, uh, the prosecution has spent his entire cross-examining uh, uh, portion po trying to poke holes in why John Reed did what he did in the way that he did it. The defense is merely trying to reestablish that his morals were sound and his reasoning was sound. And quite frankly, the defense is succeeding in doing that right now. You're on a speculation. Right. True. <laughs> we'll, we'll call it even. Give you both a fuck up. <laughs> Continue. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll try to be better in the future. I promise. I zap you both with my hammer a little. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you've made it clear that you destroyed these weapons that were going to be used as components in in creating more powerful weapons in the future. Once you had taken the actions to destroy these weapons and specifically destroy Mr. Knight's lab that the Snakebite gang was forcing him to use. Indeed. How did you try to escape? Well, at the time, we had very... We were literally in a corner. Um, there were many Snakebite gang members coming after us, so we were desperately looking for... Do you have an estimate, for, you have an estimate um, of anyway, how many? At least, at least 35 plus, I believe, or at least 30 plus, including um, Copperhead and um, Boa. Oh, oh snake games! So, that's sick as fuck. So, nice. so you're saying, so you're saying that there were 35 snake bite gang members plus Copperhead and Boa are are those two of of, of particular significance? Indeed, they were the captains. Or generals, you can say, of the Saint by King. High-ranking officers. Indeed. Were they more skilled than the other Snake by King members in any way? Indeed. Um, oh, Cotton Mouse, thank you. Indeed. Uh, during our escape away from them, uh, we grabbed the nearest thing, a coach, and we rode off. Uh, I have. I died to Boa, um, so I can confident, or 
I er, I passed out, er, aka I ran out of hit points and I went into unconsciousness. Um, so you're I so heard, you're saying that that you 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 took a, a stagecoach and mm -hmm. while you were trying to escape, these these two attacked you and rendered you unconscious. Indeed. Twice. How did they do that? Uh, the first time was one of the Stink Bike Game members uh, shot me and I went to unconsciousness. Then the um, Marshal gracefully brought me back up. And then Boa, in a attempt to, uh, to protect uh, Joseph, I um, I kind of distracted her away from him towards me, and she she wrapped me up and um, constricted me to unconsciousness. <laughs> okay. May the record show there is no sexual subcontact to that statement. <laughs> the judge is merely a pervert. Thank. <laughs> so. So all of this is, is to say that when you tried to escape with the man you had come to rescue from being kidnapped, the snake bite mm -hmm. gang pursued you. How Indeed. how long how long did they do that for? At least for about at least thirty minutes, if at least thirty minutes, if not longer. It was a long chase. And they brought everything they brought. They they brought their almost their entire. I think they brought the entire platoon on us. Uh, I believe there was a siege machine coming after us as well. Siege machine. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. All right. And how did you end up losing them? Um, we just kept on um, shooting at them, trying to take them out and then we lost them in a canyon where uh, some carriages crash into each other um, as well as um, Patric Patroclus um, stopping a couple of carriages and wagons and siege machine <laughs> okay thank you uh, okay, and also want. to the drivings of Joseph Donnelly. Thank you. Uh, when the original owners of the stagecoach that you had procured from the Snake Bite Gang to escape them approached you and your party, uh, requesting them back, what did you do? We gave them back without hesitation. Thank you. Let's move on to the train. You say that you wanted to procure this map piece because you were concerned that the Snakebite gang would be able to use the pieces they had in their possession to find the treasure. Is that correct? Indeed. There was a law enforcement officer present when you made the decision to attempt to remove the map piece yes indeed uh we talked to we were talking about this plan and he agreed to it so he agreed that there was a clear and present danger from the snake bite gang and that it would be better to disturb the crypt and retrieve the map piece than allow oh. the map piece your honor leading the witness True. Indeed. I think. Let me rephrase my question for the benefit of the prosecution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly. Was the marshal... Did the marshal believe at the time that there was a clear and present danger from the snake bite game? Yes. Was the marshal involved in the discussion in disturbing the crypt? Yes. Was the marshal aware of the 
the threat that the Snakebite gang posed when the discussion to open the crypt was happening? Yes. Did the marshal at any point attempt to dissuade or prevent you from opening the crypt to retrieve the map piece? No. To, so to be clear, the marshal, an officer of the law who had been assigned to tail you, when asked explicitly if it was okay to open the crypt, agreed that it would be the best course of action. Yes. One last question on the subject of the crypt. After you were done in the crypt, after you were done in the train car, did you close the crypt? Yes. We closed it up, and I believe we, like, put all the um, rocks and stuff into the um, crypt so that way it can never be found again. Were there any attempts to... Uh, sa uh, sterilize the crypt with, with fire or chemicals or any other means? Yes, there was some fire involved, yes. Okay. Thank you. There are two more lines of questioning that the defense are going to explore with this witness. The first cool. is pretty short. Can we make it so I can bullet point them? Yes. The first is pretty short. The prosecution has made it clear that you spent a day in Gold Throne tailing the victim to learn of his character before you committed the crime. Correct. What exactly did you observe Duke Barrett doing during that time? Be specific, witness. Poor treatment of... Yes. Um, I saw him display um, verbal abusement and harassment towards some of the workers in the mining areas. Um, what did he say? I was out of earshot for that, but I did see him, he, like you can see from the distance that he was yelling at his workers and that his workers were were in fear of him. Though his workers were afraid of him? Indeed. What did their body language uh, look like? Were they cowering? Uh, did they just look tensed up? They were tensed up. They were tensed up. Okay. One last line of question. that you had an encounter with one of your party members in a clearing north of Alchemist Town. Is this correct? Correct. Would you like me to explain what, it further? What was, yes, what was the purpose of this meeting? I initially believed it to be um, uh, for that party member for me to leave the party and never returned or to try to make me or, or to make me go to court um, instead it was uh, it was tell him telling me to get rid of the persona get rid of this alter ego and bury it and that's what I did I, I took some self-reflection and realized that this is not the man I wanted to be, nor the man I will I don't want to be, and I want to be a new man. So I took off all the the black leather, the eyeliner, the pistol, the rifle, all the weapons um, connected to Steel Survivor, and I buried it. I shot at it. And I shot at it, buried it, wrote on the stump nearby, Here lies Steel Survivor, killed by John Reed. Your Honor, assumes facts not in evidence. None of those were found or proven to have occurred. Your Honor, 
This fact will be demonstrated in further witness testimony. It better be. Or I'll zap you. He will zap you. I'm, I'm allowed to do that. Uh, please, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> so, then, and then this, this occurred before your actions in, 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 with, with the train carriage, and before your actions Correct. with the, uh, uh, your actions in Middleton, and before your actions in, in Timber Trail. Correct. Um, for timeline reference, this happened about a couple days to, I think, about a week after the murder of Duke Barrington. So during that meeting, you resolved to give up the steel, per, the, the steel survivor persona. And alter ego. And alter ego. There's one, there's one last thing that I want to, to ask you about. Did you... You went to Briarstone after that, later. Uh, Indeed. Did you, did you, you, did you meet anyone there? Um, I was, I sent a letter in advance to one King Dijon to talk with him. See, just like a, how he's doing. Um, it's been a couple of years since the last time I seen him. Um, I went to the park to wait for him because he said, hey, we're going to meet, let's meet at this park. It's like, okay. Uh, way there, and instead of King Dijon, I saw uh, Miss Jade Barrett there. Um, um, she um, was the one that wrote the letter for me to meet her at the park as King Dijon. Um, she nearly shot me and and wanted me trialed for her father's murder. And or she wanted to like pinpoint me like at that I killed him. And to prove that I'm a changed man, I told her that if she likes, she can follow us and prove to her that I'm cha that Object I'm... objection uh, objection narrative. Uh, witness, I only asked if you met anyone in Brownstone. Oh. oh, my apologies. My apologies for going long winded. It's objected to his own witness. That's crazy. <laughs> He's very allowed to do that. Relationship. John, John Reed is a very interesting man. <laughs> He's very talkative. He talks a lot, yep. My apologies. Uh, yeah, it's I thought Miss cool. Barrett. I didn't do anything. <laughs> so you, you, said, you said you saw, you met Miss Barrett in town. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was supposed to meet Keen Dijon. Okay, so... If you had not received the letter that you thought was from King Dijon, would you have gone to that meeting? No. Okay. Thank you, witness. No further questions. Uh, I look uh, over at, at the judge. Uh, Your Honor, uh, may I go to my seat now? Yes. <laughs> uh, the defense calls Chief Inspector Jade Barrett to the stand. Yeah, that's right. him up there. Uh, call into the stand daughter. Jade Barrett, and hope da the wife. daughter of the deceased and uh, chief investigator in this murder trial. Formerly chief like investigator I... after being passed on to the marshal. Men. Alright. Uh, your witness defense. Uh, Miss Barrett, uh, how long have you been the, the, the chief investigator assigned to this particular case? I was put on this case on uh, February 12th, the same day as the murder of my father. Okay, so the murder happened and then you were, you were on the case. Yes, I received a telegram to my office informing me of my father's murder. I immediately dispatched myself out to the side of Goldthrone. I, I will state I am no longer the head investigator. That that honor has been passed on to Marshal Colt Carlson, who is acting chief investigator as of this moment. Okay. 
Uh, the defense would, would like to begin by discussing your meeting with, uh, with John Reed in, in, uh, in, in Briarstone. Uh, why did you send uh, a, a telegraph to, to Mr. Reed in, in particular? I was under the impression that there was an active threat to King Dijon. Uh, my office had received another telegram from one ge former General Mustard, uh, informing us of a uh, a man named John Reed who had entered his house and had become very belligerent, and had mentioned many things about Mr. Mustard's daughter, Honey. I believe there was an active threat too with a. Uh, the king, and as such, put myself in this place in order to lead a potential witness out. Okay, so your suspicions towards okay. John Reed stemmed towards it stemmed from his interactions with General Mustard, and not any connection with with the case you were investigating. There were both things involved in that. The investigation was the primary reason that he was under suspect. Uh, his act at, with the General Mustard was originally considered just to be uh, the act of a belligerent drunkard, perhaps. Uh, um, we were unclear on the exact things he had imbibed that day. But upon hearing that a murder had taken place of another high royalty, uh, my father, Duke Barrett, uh, we decided that it was only proper to attempt to protect further royalty from this act, especially if the lead suspect was attempted to contact one of them. Okay, so you, you consider this meeting to be a part of your investigation into, into John Reed? I do. Okay. Uh, and and uh, uh, Joseph goes over to his desk and pulls up the copy of the laundry list of charges that the prosecution has, has presented uh, John with. And he says, um, the, uh, the, the prosecution describes the, the relationship between, uh, uh, Marshal, uh, Marshal, Marshal Carlson. The prosecution describes the relationship between Marshal Colt Carlson and the, and the defendant as a, as a, as a court ordered supervision. Uh, is this accurate to you? Uh, you see, she kind of shifts in her seat a little bit. I do believe it is a one version of telling the story. While it is true that Mr. Mr. Reed did volunteer to have the marshal I'm follow sorry, him. I'm sorry, witness. Do you believe that to be accurate? There can be multiple accurate representations of 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 the story. I do believe it to be accurate. I believe believe that Marshal Carlson was assigned to tail. Mr. Reed, and Mr. Reed was fully aware of this and all the things imp implied by it. That being said, he knowingly, according to the report of the marshal, he knowingly slipped his gaze on multiple occasions to send letters or interact with people that they didn't want the marshal seeing, or just to get Witness. around on the town. Witness... You're telling a story that I haven't asked you to tell right now. I'm sure the prosecution will get to it if they deem it appropriate. So you, as a witness, you're saying that the description, phrase court-mandated supervision, is accurate. I do believe it to be accurate in this situation, as the, the while it was volunteered, we did a put in yes, an sir. official report putting her at him as the primary uh, investigator of this case. Okay. He was mandated by the court to follow Mr. Reed. And Mr. Reed was oh. aware of this and had a verbal agreement to follow this. Ah. Okay. Witness, in future, when I ask you a yes or no question, I expect a yes or no answer. Is that clear? Very, very well. Thank you. Okay. So witness can you say that is it would it be accurate to say that this court mandated supervision stems directly from the meeting that you had with john reed 
in Bryce? Yes. Yes? Yes, I would. Okay. Now, witness, you have described, uh, you, you have signed an affidavit saying that you are the one who wrote the letter to the defendant pretending to be King Dijon to draw him out. You've also stated that in testimony. Is that correct? Yes. That is true. Okay. When did you ask King Dijon if it was okay to do this? I did not. I was well within my authority as head of intelligence to make these executive decisions on the king's behalf. Yeah, um, at this, Joe, jo, jo, Joseph smirks. Oh, fucking yeah. go! Yeah. <laughs> oh, witness, I'm well aware that you are within your authority to take certain actions. Impersonating a king without his permission is illegal. You are allowed to take certain actions in your capacity as intelligence head, but you are not allowed to commit illegal acts. In what way was I impersonating the king? I signed his name that is allowed. I did not use any royal press or memorabilia in the signing of this telegraph. So you, you admit you signed his name? I said from Dijon, that's well within my limits as head, as head of intelligence. This is fully legal defense. Are there any other... So, so, so you're saying that somehow writing a letter and then signing the king's name at the bottom is not impersonating the king? I believe it is impersonating the king, but as I am within my legal limits to do so as head of intelligence. This has been established and is written in that affidavit you have right there. Again, you are allowed to do many things as head of intelligence. You are not allowed to do something that is illegal. And unless you asked the king for permission to impersonate him, then that is illegal. I do and not since... require consent of the king to send letters on his behalf. You don't? Not by the laws of Briarstone. Those are some pretty it's smoky sort... laws. Especially <clears throat> if I... In, in the case... In this case in particular, normally I would. In this case in particular, as there was a potential threat to his life, I took... It was within my ability to do that. Did you? It's like the, the presidential king? fitness test when you get a letter. <laughs> I don't know what that yeah. means, Your Honor. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't me. I wasn't doing voice. <laughs> get a letter from the president. The fitness gram pacer test. It, did you inform the king of the threat to the this? You say threat to his life. I did inform him that there was a uh, potential insurgent, a uh, former member of the military who had very ill, who harbored Ill, Ill feelings towards me certain members of his family. Okay. And during that meeting, you say you didn't ask him permission to use his name to draw that potential threat out. I did not. I did not require it. I have stated multiple occasions that this is not a requirement of my station. I'm not sure what laws you're familiar with, Mr. Donnelly. In Briarstone, okay. as head of intelligence, I'm allowed to do that. Witness, is it illegal to impersonate the king? Uh, you see, at this point, Rhodes stands up. Your Honor, this is going nowhere. This is circular questioning. At, and the, the witness has clearly stated that this is not a direct, an actual crime. The witness is wrong. The witness assumed that she was allowed to do something just because I he nothing, had a certain Mr. opinion. I, you, you have not been asked a question yet, witness. You just asked me a question. <laughs> the witness assumed that she had the right to do something that she did not have the right to do. She assumed that she could do something illegally just because there was a threat to the king. That is not the case. And because yeah. it was an illegal action, the evidence that was gathered as a result of that action, mainly the evidence gathered from the supervision that the court mandated on my client, is in it could be rendered inadmissible.
Your Honor, permission to treat the Wist Owl as hotness. Ho the witness <laughs> as hot. The witness style. as hotness. <laughs> no <laughs> way. The, host, the, the witness as hostile. Being hostile. No, the witness is testifying against the party who's called them to testify, which leads them to be a hostile witness. Your Honor, they were well aware of Miss Barrett's stance in this trial before calling her to the stand. That doesn't mean we can't call her or treat her as a hostile witness on the stand after the fact. This makes sense. She is testifying against the party who has called them to testify, which is the definition of a hostile witness. I am simply asking for legal permission to do so. And what? Where are you going with this? Mr. Well, this allows us as examiners to. This allows us to ask questions in a certain way. That's all. That's crazy. Uh, Your Honor, objection asked and answered. The defense is clearly trying to get a certain answer out of the witness, which is not coming. It simply is not there. I would ask that they move on to another line of questioning. Fine. Right. That night... So that night, when the, when the meeting happened, you believed there was a clear and present danger to the... To, to the king. I did. Okay. How many people accompanied you to the meeting? Uh, no officers accompanied me to the meeting. I had several stationed nearby in case things turned violent, which I personally somewhat expected them to do. So you expected them to turn violent? Mr. Reed wasn't known to be violent at the time. We had a file on one steel survivor in plenty of known associations between the two. Uh, we believe that, especially with his more recent track record of killing heads of state, there was a good chance they could turn violent upon being confronted by the law. Okay. So, did you go to that meeting that night with the intent to arrest Mr. Reed? I did not. Why? At the time, I merely had Evidence linking him to location and motive for the crime. The matches M.O. We had found the bullet at the scene of the crime, which also matches M.O. But I did not have any direct evidence. I sought to get more, which is why I informed him that he would be tailed by one of my officers. He then volunteered to have that officer join his group. So you're saying that you are the one who came up with the idea to have Mr. Reed tailed by an officer of the law. I was going to launch a formal investigation into him after it confronted him. Uh, after he arrived in Brystone, I would have full aware of his location. Again, within the law, I know you I, might try to point something out here. I am allowed to assign tails to people. Yes, Miss Barrett, I'm not suggesting that you aren't. And I'm not suggesting that your investigation would have stopped after this meeting. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm trying to get at is, did you suggest to Mr. Reed that he should be tailed by an officer of the law? Or was it Mr. Reed who asked to be tailed? I informed Mr. Reed he would be tailed. Mr. Reed asked if the if the marshal could instead join the group, so we would have better knowledge of his whereabouts. Okay, so you you told you told uh, you told John that he would be tailed. Is that exactly what you told him? That is not exactly what I told him. No. Okay. Uh, can you remember exactly what you told him? Objection, Your Honor. Leading the witness. Leading. Well, I have no idea what. What because she's going to say. <laughs> the witness is hostile, he's answer. allowed to ask leading questions as well. That makes so, sense to me. Let him go. Let him rest. Let him cook. <laughs> Thank you, Eli. Yeah. What What did you Do you remember what you said exactly to him? I would like to point out for the record that uh, Mr. Donnelly was also present at this confrontation and is aware of what was said. Thank you. Uh, Rhodes sits back down. Uh, 
And Barrett again just sort of sits there and says, Well, I vaguely recall, I did formally inform him that I was going to be a large investigation. I might have used slightly stronger words than that. I told That's him okay. that I would be. Thank you for that. I told him I would be tailing his every move after this point. That I believe my line was, uh, he could not sneeze without me knowing about it. Okay. And what did John Reed say to you after that? Mr. Reed brought up the proposition that I personally join you all in your merry adventures, which I declined. What was the purpose that he asked? I believe he wanted me to investigate personally to see that he was not the kind of man to do that. To have committed an assassination like that. Okay, so Mr. Reed asked you to, uh, to, to accompany him. That is true. What, what, what was your, what was your plan of action after that? I decided to send along Marshal Carlson as I knew we could, as I knew, as someone formerly outside of my jurisdiction, as a Marshal of the United States, instead of as a, uh, one of the law militiamen of Briarstone, he would have a more objective opinion on this case. Okay, so you assigned Marshal, Marshal Carlson yes. after, after that. That I did. Were you, did, did, did John relay any information, any other information to you pertaining to the murder of, of Duke At the time, he did not. I believe he remained purposely vague about the actual murder itself. There were several lines which heavily insinuated that he had in fact killed my father, such as, maybe I just caught him on a bad day. But he did explicitly say that he did not do it. Did he let you know where the murder weapons were? He did, in fact, uh, mention that there was a certain location north of about an hour's walk north of Alchemist Town, where the murder weapons could be found buried in the ground beneath the stump. I decided, as is written in the report, four officers were dispatched. They found nothing of the sort. Okay, but okay, so but but. But you're saying that John definitively told you a location. Well, he told you a location where the murder weapons should be. Yes. And that when you and that when you went there, they they weren't there. They were not. Okay. Thank you. Uh. Once Marshal Carlson Carlson had been uh, uh, dispatched with Mr. Reed and his compatriots, um, well, how did your investigation continue? Personally, my investigation ended there. I had no further interaction with the with John Reed or his party until their arrival in Briarstone. There were several times in which. I was contacted by certain members of the party for, uh, for various favors or legal advisement, but I had no further direction with Jonathan Reed. Okay. Uh, uh, one, uh, one, uh, one last question. Were you, uh, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Reed uh, testified earlier today that he would have his target selected for him by people who carved a a, uh, a name on a bullet and left a quarter dollar underneath it. Uh, that is true. Were, were you aware of this of this? I guess you could say modus operandi uh, before you had definitive proof that that John Reed was was a uh, was steel survivor. Uh, well, we were aware of a rumor of a figure called Steel Survivor who existed in the public. We had reports of a, you know, the, the old rumor of a, a 
quarter for a bullet. Two hours how it went. Uh, we had no definitive linking to anyone before that event, and considered it to be largely rumor or chance. Someone of copycats decided to cash in on a known superstition. Okay. We so did not have definitive you... proof that he existed until the murder of Duke Barrett, which the signature weapon was called placed there, which won all previous evidence was able to be used against him in that murder. Uh, you said something just now about copycats under a known superstition. Uh, say more about that. Well, it is the, the rumor of Steel Survivor was around for a bit. The vigilante killer... Uh, cheap for hire. We saw the motor. We saw a number of motors which are listed in the Crown Report, many of which we have since discovered were not actually related to Mr. Reed, but in fact people just attempting to get an easy kill out of the way using his identity. Okay. The, ni so the 19 counts of murder which are associated with him in the Crown's list are in fact linked to him due to look, people's finding someone matching his description at the location around the town of Prague. I... Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Detective Barrett. All right. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Governor Rose steps up to the, the witness stand. Mr. Uh, sorry, Miss Barrett. Now, I uh -huh. reading through your investigation report, uh, I've noticed a very interesting case here. Uh, you mentioned that there was a, a listed incident of a scuffle between John Reed and several members of the Snakebite Gang uh, on a ferry. Is this correct? Uh, and Barrett goes. Yes, that is correct. There was a report with multiple witnesses of John Reed, as well as the rest of the defense council, uh, taking down a number of robbers on this train. Right. And after these defendants were, after the, uh, the snake bike game members were apprehended, would you say that, what was their statement of how John Reed wanted to treat them? Uh, and you see, uh, Barrett says, well, there were several reports from witnesses there, as well as from the two, the uh, two of the three who are still in custody. Uh, the third, who I believe you are calling Deathblade here, did escape custody later on, uh, before I could do my investigation on him. Uh, the two remaining, as well as corroborated by several witnesses, uh, stated that Mr. Reed wanted to kill the snake by gang members after they had already been tied up and apprehended. Stating that it would be simpler to turn them in were they dead. Well, that's that's mighty interesting, Miss Barrett. That's a interesting little story that the defense seemed to leave out when questioning Mr. Reed and yourself. Now... In your investigations of the defendant, has he proven to be mentally sound, would you say? Uh, and Barrett once again says, in my experience, no, he has not. Uh, he has been shown, on, through the multiple interactions with people listed in my reports, as having somewhat violent outbursts when confronted with uh, contradiction, people that don't agree with him or won't let him have his way. Uh, and Governor Rhodes starts to kind of like pace around the room. Now, I'll ask you, members of the jury, does that sound like the actions of a man who should be on the street with a gun, you know, representing our fair city as an agent of our city, a man who cannot keep his temper in check, a man who, as the defendant pointed out, uh, would bring one of his own to a clearing in the middle of the woods and 
possibly we cannot officially corroborate, but what was said there, who could really say? I do believe it was, in fact, some manner of threats being exchanged. Of course, this is merely speculation on my part. I beat you to the punch there, Defender. I beat you to the punch there, Mr. Burgess. I see you there with your pocket sized copy of the Constitution. Thank you very much for that. Pat will then hold up his book, which is clearly the size of a very large dog. <laughs> now, Mrs. Barrett, when you were investigating your father's murder in uh, Gold Throne, uh, what was the state of the crime when you arrived? Objection asked and answered. We I would know. like... I would like to get the professional's opinion on this matter. Uh, the professional to... already gave her opinion in her report, which, if you recall, was submitted to evidence. True. Very well, very well. Uh, witness, uh, you were, as the defense told, made aware of the location of several items, including the murder weapon. Is this true? I uh, says... That is not true. As established, there were no murder weapons at the location given. Now, in your opinion, as a as chief of intelligence and as an investigator, weapons found at the location. This does not mean that there are no weapons at the location. The evidence of absence, not evidence. Absence. Yeah. What Cur saying? Currently, the only proof we have that anything was ever at this location is the defense and his defense counsels say so. Which I will say makes them biased in my opinion. Objection opinion. And also in the opinion of the law. I could sort of shoot him again. Uh, I would not affect this in this situation. Uh, I will say Miss Defendant, in your uh, witness, in your opinion what would it mean for someone to say the location of a murder weapon and then a thorough investigation were to prove that there was, in fact, no murder weapon at that location? Objection. Opinion. The witness is not liable to give The opinion, opinion is a listed expert in this field, and as such is allowed to speculate on these concepts. The I'm not asking for her opinion on this case. I'm asking her a hypothetical question. You're asking the witness how she views the defendant. That is not... I'm asking the witness how she treats a certain situation in her, in her experiences. There's no, difference, there's no difference from asking a doctor what they would think if the man was having heart convulsions. I'll let him cook. Uh, you see, Barrett says, in my experience... Whenever, if lengths are gone to obfuscate the location of a murder weapon, then that is likely, likely Object due to the defendants. Objection. Facts not provided in evidence. There is no evidence that the defendant obfuscated the location of the murder weapon. There is only testimony. There is evidence that he lied yes, about the location. Governor Rhodes, you will you will contain your emotions while I'm stating my objection. That's true. There is evidence that my client said that the murder weapon would be in one place, and then it was dis then the murder weapon was not found in that place. There is no evidence that has been provided as to why the murder weapon was not found there, and until the prosecution can provide positive evidence that. The murder weapon maybe was actually somewhere else. Then the defense will not stand for this line of questioning. I was merely asking the defense, the witness, in a professional opinion, what a situation like this would mean. I was not in any way relating to this crime right here. I was asking a hypothetical. Again, in the that same case, way you'd ask a doctor. Jerry, you feel free to disregard it. <laughs> We're not dealing with hypotheticals here today, Governor Rhodes. This isn't a constitutional court. We're dealing with a few hypotheticals, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right. On that matter, uh, on the matter of a constitutional court, Miss Barrett, you are aware of the 
military records of one John Reed, correct? Yes, that is correct, I am aware. He served diligently in the Brownstone Militia for two years, up until the Battle of the Oasis, at which point he was reported MIA. His body was not recovered. We presumed he was killed, but that is clearly not the case. Right. This Barrett, would you, wouldn't this discount as desertion of duty? As this man was assigned a post, and he abandoned said post at some point during the battle. Yes, that would be a discount. There, there, that's not what desertion well, there, there's no, there isn't any evidence that my, that, 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 that the defendant left his, his post during the battle. He maintains that he was wounded and no one helped him. That's not desertion. That's the army abandoning him. At any, at any point did the defendant attempt to contact the, the militia or any members inside the militia in order to corroborate his story, explain his situation, or attempt to seek medical refuge. Uh, no, he did not. There was no reports of a John Reed attempting to make contact with the militia. We have several Joe, reports uh, of a steel survivor who uh, turned in bounties, but nothing direct from John Reed. Your Honor. No, you can't. You can't. Okay. Objection. Okay. The defendant is not on stand right now. He cannot testify. My apologies. My apologies. It's cool. I've never been in court before. <laughs> oh, well, I will yield the remainder of my time to the court. Uh, he goes and sits back down. And, uh, Nathan, would you like to call halftime? <laughs> cool. Halftime. 